Hey, what's happening, guys? We're going to build a kit. Pardon the shine there. This is the Geek Fun Electronic LED PCB DIY kit. And this is a pretty nice looking kit. Now, I had a comment in one of my last kit builds from somebody who said, Why don't I explain what the components do while we're building the kit? so that everybody can have a better understanding of it. Well, that's a great idea. And I appreciate you guys that leave comments like that to make the channel better. So we're gonna do that. We got some stuff here. This is a pretty simple kit, which is one of the reasons I wanted to build it. As you can see, we've got basically a star shape couple ICs, some transistors, uh, basically one transistor for each one of these arms, and then some passive components. Now I was going to uh, draw this out. We have an NE555 and a CD4017, but they have included an excellent schematic drawing here so that I really don't have to draw this out we can go over that drawing and we're going to do that and talk about it now of course the NE555 is the most produced IC in history and it is simply uh, it's called a timer chip it's used uh, mainly as a bistable or monostable oscillator you're going to find them in uh, surface mount, through hole, I mean, just everywhere. They're going to be in just about everything because it can do so many different things. I have a, quite a few videos on the 555 timer out there, so feel free to look at them. But basically, the 555 timer um, has an output on pin 3. The uh, output is called Q. And by varying some resistors and capacitors, you can change the timing of when Q is high, when Q is active. And that sounds like such a simple thing, and it really is, but it's incredibly useful to be able to generate a pulse at uh, controlled intervals. In this case, it's going to be used as a clock pulse for the CD4017. So, I'm going to do a little bit of basic assembly of the kit here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put in all the resistors. There's really nothing to talk about for resistors. They resist the flow of current. They, they provide a, a bit of a bottleneck. So, let me put in the resistors and I'll be right back. Okay, as you can see now, if you look at the circuit, I've installed all but one of the resistors and that's because that resistor is, has a different purpose. Now if you look here what you're gonna see oh I missed one okay anyway we'll come back to that what you're gonna see here are 10 pairs of resistors that go with the 10 outputs of the 4017 so if we grab the schematic and we look here here are the outputs of the uh, 4017 Q0 through Q9, and they each have a 1K resistor. That's the one with the gold end on it, okay? Now those are feeding the bases of these transistors. So they are biasing the base current of the transistors. Now each one also has with it a 200 ohm resistor. And that's these resistors up here that are biasing the collectors. So you see we're biasing both the base and the collector in each one of these pairs. Now the final resistor down here is a 10K resistor and that is just used in the timing of this 555. So it's a little bit different. So we've got our resistors in. I think next we will go for the transistors which they have listed on here as a triode. Just want to bend these legs a tiny little bit 
so they fit better. But then we'll talk about them. Just make sure you line them up in the holes correctly. If you mess up your collector and your emitters, they really aren't going to work. So these two resistors and this transistor that are for each one of the legs of this unit are forming a switch. The NE555 timer sends a pulse out of uh, pin number three. That triggers the next output of the Johnson counter to go high, which will send a pulse to the base of one of these transistors through the 1K current limiting resistor, which will cause it to conduct through the 200 ohm collector resistor through the emitter and power up the LEDs. Okay, I hope you guys can see this well enough. These are the transistor that needed to be soldered in, or as the Chinese call it, welded. And they are tightly, tightly, tightly spaced. So let's see how well I can do. Just a little bit of solder on the tip of the iron for conductivity, thermal transfer, as you say. Nope, that did not do it. That just went right up the uh, right up the leg. I don't want to get too much on there because I don't want to have a um, solder bridge. I'm jumping around here. I'm only doing one leg of a transistor at a time. That way I can kind of keep them from getting too hot. Okay, so we've got three sections over here ready to roll. And you can see we have two more sections over here that will need their transistors. And then of course everything on the other side of the board. But we're moving right along. And like I said, this is a nice circuit. Remember, the 555 sends out a pulse to the clock input of the 4017, which then triggers an output on one of its 10 outputs, which goes through the 200, or which goes through the 1K, that's that one, resistor through the base of the transistor, which pulls the, coll the collector, then pulls voltage down from the VCC rail through the 200 ohm. And it goes, there we go, out through the emitter and through the line of LEDs. Why? Why not just turn on each of these LEDs through the 4017? Well, because they're going to take more current than we want to put through a TTL chip. So you use a transistor as a switch, and it becomes basically like a, uh, oh, how should I put it? Oh, it's a transistor as a switch. We'll just leave it at that. Okay, so now we're all set. We have all our transistors. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Did I count wrong? Oh, I missed one. One more. We got to have a transistor and a pair of resistors for each leg. This happens a lot, especially when you get older and your eyes get bad. You just miss things here and there. Just double check, it's no big deal. Okay, so now we're going to start putting in the LEDs and we're going to alternate them red and yellow so 
start with the red one here. Long leg is the anode. In this case, the anode goes to the square. And there is a diode symbol on the board, just in case. Those are fitting in there really nicely. <clears throat> I'm going to alternate them like this. Just doing the reds first. This gives me some more room to get behind and do my soldering. Yeah. Okay. So, there's a hundred LEDs, hopefully, soldered in the correct direction with the polarities the way they're supposed to be. I think I got it. I have to apologize, my camera battery died, so we missed a little bit of the final filming in of the, uh, the ICs. So, everything is now put together. When we power this up, 5 volts will flow into the 555 timer. And it will come out through these resistors here which will influence this capacitor here which will affect the timing coming out of pin 3 when pin 3 goes high it will send a clock pulse over to the CD4017 the first time it does it will fire Q1 so Q1 will go high through this 1k resistor and that will come here to the base of Q1, which will pull down current through VCC and out through the string of LEDs. Next time um, pin 3 of the 555 fires, uh, Q1 will, Q2 will go and boom, 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 it will go down the line. That is assuming, of course, that I soldered everything correctly and it don't blow up when I plug it in. All right, here we go. Nothing. Well, that's bad. What the heck is going on there? Seems like there's a short somewhere. Let me uh have a look. I found the short. It was a solder bridge right here. I have repaired it. And other than it looks like I might have missed up a couple of wirings or solderings of the LEDs. Everything seems to be working okay. And that's a pretty cool little kit. Uh, the reason that quit is because of the power bank. Seems like this LED here is not firing. So that's pretty good. Let's uh, check something else. Let's see what the variable resistor does. Come on, power bank. Yep, that controls the speed. So, this is a pretty cool kit. I wouldn't recommend it for a first kit, just because there are so many joints that need to be soldered. But for a second or a third kit, it's pretty cool. I'd like to thank the uh, viewer who sent this to me, along with a couple other things in uh, honor of his mother. I really appreciate that. And uh, we have a nice kit here. So thank you guys for watching. Big thanks to all the patrons. That's it. Come on. That's it. <laughs> I'm out. Peace.